Okay, so we're going to talk, start our discussion on module four uh, with the law of sines and cosines. Uh, before we start with that, the first thing we want to talk about is the difference between uh, right triangle trig and oblique trig, okay? So when, we've, when we're dealing with right triangle trig, we're doing uh, sine, cosine, tangent, and we're always looking at uh, things like, you know, the hypotenuse, of a right triangle, if we're looking at this as our theta, then the side opposite is called the opposite, right? And the side touching it is called the adjacent. So we can find sine theta is what? Opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So these are all the things that we can find when we're dealing with right triangles. But if we're not dealing with right triangles, if we're dealing with what's called an oblique triangle, which just means it's not a right triangle, uh, such as this one, notice it doesn't have a right triangle. All of these are uh, non-right. This is actually an obtuse triangle because, uh, yeah, well, it's got a big, greater than 90 degree angle. So uh, here we have you know, something I can't deal with. I, I can't solve this uh, this triangle's values if I don't know how to get the sine, the cosine, the tangent. You know, if I've got values, I don't, I, I can't just do opposite over hypotenuse. I, I can't just do adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, I have to be able to figure out, you know, some other way of doing it. So if I've got theta here, and I've got, you know, that this is five and this is nine, I can't do you know, the tangent of theta is 5 over 9. I can't just do opposite over adjacent because it's not a right triangle. I have to have some way of manipulating this data so that I can figure out what theta is or, you know, some way of figuring out what the hypotenuse is. Because before, over here, I know that, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagorean theorem, right? I don't have a Pythagorean theorem for oblique triangles. So, if I've got 5 and 9, that doesn't give me that length there. There's no correlation, okay? So I have to have some kind of law that tells me, you know, the correlation between all of these values. So what we're going to start with is what's called the law of sines. So if I take an oblique triangle and I label all of the vertices, uh, the points, capital letters, A, B, C. So those are going to be my angles, capital A, capital B, capital C. And I, I label the sides opposite those angles as their lowercase equivalent. So little a is opposite big A. Uh, little b is opposite big B. And then little c is opposite big C. Okay? So notice that's how we're going to do, that's the labeling convention. So if I have a triangle, then any oblique triangle, or any right triangle for that matter, any triangle at all, will always have this correlation. The sine of big A over A is equal to the sine of big B over B, which will also be equal to the sine of big C over C. All of these values will be equal. Okay, so as long as I've got three values that I can plug in, I should be able to find, you know, some other value. As long as the three values I have are not all three angles or all three sides, I should be able to find some kind of correlation and be able to do it, okay? So let's look at some examples. So here I have a triangle. I'm given that angle B, this is a symbol that means angle, so angle B equals 35 degrees. Uh, side little a is 13. And side little b is 10. Okay? So what I want to do now is solve this triangle. And anytime you see the term solve a triangle, that just means get all of the values that you don't have. So I don't have big A, I don't have big C, and I don't have little c. Okay, so those are the values I need. I need big A, 
big C and little c. Okay? That's what I'm looking for. So, how do I use the law of sines? Well, as long as, like I said, I don't have just three sides or three angles, I can generally find two characters here that are the same. As long as I have a big B and a little b, I can put those together, right? Sine of big B over little b will be equal to, and then I have that little a. So I can use sine of big A over little a. So what I'm doing is I'm using the things that I have relationships with. I know I have the two Bs, so that's going to give me the one fraction that I need. I have to have one fraction that has both values. So I've got sine of 35 degrees over 10 equals sine of A over 13. So notice I have four pieces of this fraction, right? but only one missing. That's what I want. I couldn't do C because I have two missing pieces of C. That doesn't do me any good. I, I need only one missing piece. So to solve a fraction equal to a fraction, what we do is we do cross multiplication. Okay, so we do 13 times the sine of 35 equals 10 times the sine of A. All right, now I want sine A by itself, so I divide by 10, because remember, A is what I'm solving for. So I get sine A equals all of this. So I'm gonna use my calculator, 13 times sine of 35 equals, and then divide that by 10, equals 0.7456. 0.7456, okay? Now I have the sine A equals 0.7456. Now how do I get A if I've got the sine of A? This is when we're gonna use that arc function. So remember, if we need the angle, but we have the value, then we're gonna take the arc function of the value to get the angle. So we come back over here and we do inverse arc sine, and that's going to give us the angle, 48.21. So 48.21 degrees equals A. So A equals 48.21 degrees. Now, one little tidbit. How many, angle, how many degrees are there in a triangle? Every triangle has 180 degrees. Just like all circles have 360 degrees, all triangles have 180 degrees. So to find angle C, I've already got A and B. I can just add them together and figure out what angle uh, C is, okay? So, it's 180 minus 48.21 minus 35. So 180 minus 48.21 minus 35 equals 96.79. Okay? Now, what I want you to notice is we have a picture that doesn't quite look right. See how this is actually an acute angle, but it has a obtuse, you know, length, uh, obtuse angle. 96 is bigger than 90. This one here, oops, has 
uh, 48.21, which is actually an acute angle, but this is actually bigger than 90 degrees, okay? This is because these values generate what's called the ambiguous case, uh, which means that there are actually two different triangles that can be generated with this value. Now, we're going to go ahead and solve this uh, just like we're doing, but then I'm going to show you uh, how you can do it and get another triangle, okay? So we're just going to finish it out first, and then we're going to do a, a little trick, okay? So now we need little c. Well, I've got big C, and I know that I've got, you know, B, B, I've got A and A, so I can do any of the, you know, sine B over little b equals sine C over little c. Well, B is 35 degrees over 10 equals sine of 96.79 degrees over C. So once again, I cross multiply and I get 10 times sine of 96.79 degrees equals C times sine of 35 degrees. Now I want C by itself, so I divide by sine of 35 degrees and I get C equals 10 times 96.79 sine equals divided by 35 sine equals 17.3. Okay, so that gives me C equals 17.3. Now, notice that 17.3 doesn't really match with that picture. Okay? So, let me, real quick, I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to keep all of this except for Don't worry, I've got this saved. So uh, here, I'm going to erase all of this. Okay, so here we got arc sine is 0.7456. Now, one of the things that I mentioned this in class, and if we look at our unit circle, which let me pull one up real quick. Let me, there we go. Okay. So, I mentioned this in class that the arc functions are only defined on specific regions. Okay? Arc sine, if you plug it in your calculator, it will only give you values on this side of the unit circle. Because the arc sine is, or sine, is the y value. Right? So we get the positives from our quadrant one, and we get the negatives from our quadrant four. So they're positive here, and they're negative here. So that covers the entire range of all the positive values and all the negative values. So they're not really defined over here in quadrant two. But the problem is, when we talk about triangles, we can go from, what, 0 to 180, right? So it can be anywhere in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. So if we get a positive value, it very well, there may be an equivalent over there in the second quadrant. So what we have to do is we have to look at that possibility. So 
what we do is we say any angle over here, like 30, has one half. The corresponding value is 150, right? Which is 180 minus 30. So those two are what's called, well, they have what's called a reference angle, but they're, they have the same value of one half. So anytime we do this, we can also say that A could be 180 minus 48.21, and that gives us 131.79, okay? So that could be that angle as well. So if we go under that assumption, as long as this angle uh, can give us the correct value, so if we say now, this is going to, let me erase that, I'm sorry. I just want to erase the certain ones. So, now we'll do sine of 35 over 10 and C now is 180 minus 35 minus 131.79 and as long as this gives us a real value you know a number 180 minus 35 minus 131.79 13.21 so C is now 13.21 degrees now Sometimes we'll calculate that second A, and it will be just too big. And it, we won't get a value for C because we'll get a negative number. So if that happens, you know that you only have one triangle. You don't have an ambiguous case. You don't wind up with two triangles. But if you work it out like this, and you wind up with that second C that actually has a value, then you have to keep finding that second triangle. So sine of 35 over 10 equals sine of 13.21 over C. So once again, we're going to cross multiply so we get uh, 10 times sine of 13.21 over or well, equals uh, C times sine of 35 and then we divide by sine of 35 to get C by itself so we get C equals 10 times 13.21 sine equals divided by 35 sine equals 3.98, so we'll call it 4, okay? So now if we look at this and plug these values in, they're going to make a little bit more sense for this triangle that I have drawn. So we've got A equals 131.79, C equals 13.21, and A equals 4. So they make a little bit more sense in terms of uh, our picture than the one did before. Okay, So that's what's called the ambiguous case. It happens 
uh, when you take the arc sine, which can be in the second quadrant, uh, and you wind up being able to calculate a second C. Okay? So, this is not going to be on the quiz. It's not going to be on your test. I just wanted to show it to you so that you would know that it's out there and it does happen. Okay? Now, here's another example. We have two angles and one side. Now, if you've got two angles, you've got angle A equals 117, angle B equals 33. Well, if you've got two angles, you can automatically find angle C, right? 180 minus 117 minus 33 equals 30. So automatically, you've got angle C equals 30. And then you're given side B is 7. So there's not going to be any ambiguity in this triangle because all of the angles are given. So the angles are locked in place, so you've got no problem there. So we're going to go ahead and solve this because we know that sine of something over something equals sine of something over something. So what some things are we going to use? What does it make sense to use? Would it make sense to use B? Yes, because I have B, and I have B here. So let's use it there. So sine of 33 over 7 equals, here it's not going to matter. I've got A and C, but I don't know either one of the other ones. So let's just do A. All right, so then we're going to cross multiply. We get A times sine of 33 equals 7 times sine of 117. Divide by sine of 33. Divide by sine of 33. You get A equals 7 times sine of 117 divided by sine of 33. 11.45. Okay. So A equals 11.45. And then we can do the same thing. Sine of 33 over 7 equals the sine. Now we're going to do C. Sine of 30 over C. So once again, we're going to cross multiply. So C times sine of 33 equals 7 times sine of 30. Divide by sine of 33 because we want to get rid of that to get the C by itself. And we get C equals 7 times sine of 30 divided by sine of 33, 6.43. And those are the only two values I had to solve for. So we've got A is 11.45, C is 6.43. And we've solved that triangle. Okay? So that's law of sines in a nutshell. So now we want to look at the law of cosines. So the law of cosines comes into play when we don't have two of a matching set. We don't have big B and little b. We don't have big A and little a. We don't have big C and little c. If we've got all three sides, okay, if that happens, you know, then we have to use law of cosines. Because we can't use law of sines because you have to have a big A and a little a. You have to have a matching set. You have to have two of the same letter. Okay, so if you don't have two of the same letter, you're going to have to use law of cosines. So, what is the law of cosines? Well, Law of cosines is a little bit more complicated than the law of sines. It's going to be a way for us to solve for a letter. So say we want to solve for little a. Oops, let me get back to my black. So little a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. Well, that would be nice if that were it, but that's not it. So minus 2bc times the cosine of big A. Okay? So, 
this part looks real familiar. A squared, B squared, C squared. We can all remember that part. Minus twice of whatever this is times the cosine of whatever this is. So ABC, BCA. Okay? Now, what if you're solving for B? Well, B squared equals, well, if I've got B, I need A and C here. Minus two times both of these, A and C, cosine of whatever's over here, B. Same thing for C. C squared, I've got C here, so I need A and B here. Minus two, the A's and the B's here. Cosine of whatever's over here, which is C. So these are the three formulas that we're going to use to solve. Now, this one is solving for either little a or big A. This is for solving for little b or big B. This is for solving for little c or big C. All right? Now, sometimes if you're going to solve a triangle, you can't use just law of cosines or just law of sines. Uh, sometimes you have to use both of them to completely solve a triangle. So we'll do one of those in just a second. So let's start and get an idea for what we're talking about here. So we've got a triangle. We've got that angle B is 35 degrees, little a is 11, and little c is uh, 5. So notice, I don't have a matching pair of letters. I've got little a, big B, little c. So I can't use the law of sines. So I'm going to use the law of cosines. Now, since what I have is a, c, and big B, what I need to find is little b, okay? Because that's what I'm missing here is little b. So I'm going to use the formula b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine big B. And all I'm going to do is plug in these values. So b squared equals, that's going to be 11 squared. c is 5, so 5 squared minus 2 times 11 times 5 times the cosine of 35 degrees. So 11 squared is 121, 5 squared is 25, uh, 11 times 5 is 55, times 2 is 110, cosine of 35. So 121 plus 25 is 146, minus 110, cosine 35. We're going to subtract 146. No, we're not. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little, I don't need to, these are all numbers. I can just plug that into my calculator. So 146 minus 110 times cosine 35 equals 55.89. So B squared equals 55.89. And I want B not b squared, so I'm going to take the square root of that. Where's my square root button? There it is. So the square root of that is 7.48. 7.48. Alright, so that gives me that b equals 7.48. Now I can use the law of sines because it's much easier, right? So I can use law of sines to find either A or C and then use the fact that there are 180 degrees in a triangle to find the other angle. So let's do sine of big B over little b, since now I have matching B's, equals sine of A over A. So big B is 35, so sine of 35 degrees over 7.48 equals sine of A over 11. So we're going to cross multiply. We get 11 sine 35 equals 
sine A. So we divide by 7.48, divide by 7.48, and A will be equal to 11 times sine of 35 divided by 7.48 equals, uh, be careful, 0 0.8435, 0 0.8435, 0 0.8435, was that right? Yes, but be careful, this is not A, right? It's sine A. Right, that's what I got. So, I have sine A, but I don't want sine, I want A, which means I'm going to have to take the arc sine of 0.8435, which gives us that A equals, so I'll take the arc sine, 57.5 degrees. Okay. Now, that gives us fifty seven point five degrees there. Now, do we have an ambiguous case here? Well, if all of the 11, 5, and 7.48 are locked in, I can't have an ambiguous case because those values are locked in. However, are they locked in? Well, let's do this. If I say A could be what? A could be 180 minus 57.5? 180 minus 57.5. That's 122.5. Okay? So, that will also give me that C now equals 180 minus 35 minus 57.5, so either 87.5 or angle C equals 180 minus 35 minus 122.5 or 22.5. So we still have these two values for C. So we can check this and verify that sine C over C will give us the same values for that. Will it? Let's see. C is 5, so 87.5 sine divided by 5 equals 0.1998 that doesn't give me the same values, right? So why did it work there and not before? Does 122.5 work for that? Oh, where did my calculator go? So, 122.5 sine divided by A is 11 equals 0 0.0766. And then, so those two do work. So did I do my math right? 180 minus 35 minus 
It's 87.5. So 180 minus 35 minus 122.5. I'm doing something wrong. One eighty minus fifty seven point five minus thirty five. Minus 122.5 minus 35 is 22.5. So, sine of, oh, excuse me, 87.5 sine of 22.5 is 22.5. Minus 135 minus 35 is 135. It comes, I guess it comes from the fact that, oh yeah, I see I'm sitting here, you, you can't have an ambiguous case, you just ignore me. The ambiguous case doesn't work here because, first off, because this value B was calculated based on the fact that these two values were 11 and 5. These values are locked. They have to be locked. Therefore, these angles are going to be locked because they're, they have to be locked because those values are there. There is no ambiguous case with law of cosines. Ignore me. That was just a tangent. I was having a little bit of mind moment. So, totally ignore me. All right. So, now we have angle C is 87.5. Is that the right one? <laughs> Calculator. So 180 minus 57.5 minus 35 is 87.5. Okay. So uh, that gave us the last value that we needed, right? So we've got B. Angle A was 57.5 angle C. And we had already calculated that B was 7.48. So that gives us all, th all uh, six of our values. Okay. I feel a little better knowing that I haven't lost my mind. Now, here we have a triangle that's got all three sides, no angles at all. So what do we have to use? We have to use law of cosines. The question is, which one do we use? Do we use the one looking for A, the one looking for B, the one looking for C? The thing is, it doesn't really matter. We should get the same values regardless of what we use, okay? So, let's start by looking for A. Well, let's do it in pink. So, to look for A, we've got to use A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine big A. All right, so A equals 10, B equals 7, C equals 5. So this is going to be 10 squared equals 7 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 7 times 5 times the cosine of A. So 100 equals 49 plus 25 minus uh, 7 times 5 is 35 times 2 is 70 cosine A. 
49 plus 25 is going to give you what 74 minus 70 cosine a subtract 74 from both sides you're going to get uh, 26 equals negative 70 cosine a divide by negative 70 to get the cosine a by itself 26 divided by negative 70 negative 0.3714 equals cosine a but I don't want cosine a I want a so I'm gonna have to use arc cosine of negative 0.3714 to get a so take arc cosine I get A equals 111.8 degrees. Okay? Now, how am I going to find B? Do the same thing, only use B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine big B. So that's going to give us 7 squared equals 10 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 10 times 5 cosine B. So 49 equals 100 plus 25 minus uh, 5 times 10 is 50 times 2 is 100 cosine B. So that's 49 equals 125 minus 100 cosine B. So subtract 125. You get what? 49 minus 125. Negative 76 equals negative 100 cosine B, so divide by negative 100, we get 0.76 equals cosine B. Once again, I don't want cosine B, I want B, so I take the arc cosine, the arc cosine of 0 0.76, 40.54. And if I've got A and B, then I know that C is 180 minus A minus B. So 180 minus 111.8 minus 40.54, 27.66. All right, so that gives us all of the things that we're missing. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the area of a triangle. So normally when we do area, it's the area of a triangle is equal to uh, one half the base times the height. So if you're given a, a triangle, it's that's, that you have that, the base and the height. It's not hard to do, you know. The base of this triangle is 3. The height is 4. So, you know, 1 half of 3 times 4 is half of 12, which is just 6. So the area is 6 units, whatever the units are. So if this, these were feet, this would be square feet, right? Because area is always in square units. Well, Heron's formula tells us that of any oblique triangle, uh, or of any triangle period, the area can be found by taking the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. And you're probably wondering, well, what's S? Well, S is equal to 
the perimeter divided by 2. So A plus B plus C divided by 2. So let's test Heron's formula on this triangle up here. Well, this is a right triangle, so I don't have this side, but I can figure it out, right? Because I know that with a right triangle, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. So 9 plus 16 equals C squared. So 25 equals C squared. Therefore, C equals 5. So, for Heron's formula, S equals 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 2, which is 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 divided by 2, which is 6, okay? So my area is going to be the square root of 6 times 6 minus 5, because that's 5 is A. 6 minus 4, because 4 is B, and 6 minus 3, because 3 is C. So that's the square root of 6 times 1 times 2 times 3. Well, that's the area of 6 times 2 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36. What's the square root of 36? 6 and its square feet. So we got six square feet here, six square feet here. Both ways we get the same answer, which you really ought to, right? So let's try one that we don't know the answer already. We're going to find the area of this oblique triangle. So here we've got three sides, 9, 17, and 12. So what's S? It's going to be the perimeter, 9 plus 17 plus 12 divided by 2. So 17 plus 12 is 29. 38 divided by 2 is 19. All right. So the area is equal to the square root of 19 times 19 minus, it doesn't matter which one is A, which one is B, which one is C, because they're all in there. So I always just start with the highest and go down. So 19 minus 17, 19 minus 12, 19 minus 9. So that's 19 times 2 times 7 times 10. Well, it'd probably be easier to do this. Well, 19 is prime. 2 is prime, 7 is prime, 10 is 2 times 5. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, so I can pull the 2 out. 2 times the square root of 19 times 7 times 5. So 19 times 7 times 5. So area is equal to 2 square root of 665. Right? Yeah. It's not pretty, but it is right. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. If you need to get a hold of me, you can send me an email at uh, Professor M. Kellum at gmail.com or you can hit me up at, at Professor, I can't spell Professor, at Professor Kellum, no M on Twitter. If you've got any questions, just let me know.